All right. Let he who is without sin cast the first punch. Of course, us being without sin shall cast the first punch. Check it out. This is what we're doing today. Finally, we're punching some dudes in the face. Look at this. Just punching this guy. Bang. It's never get told. I'm, I'm get tired of this. It's just so much fun. Oh, also, um, so we're going to add that punch, and then we're also going to um, make our little character face to the left when we walk to the left, and make him face to the right when we walk to the right. <coughs> that is what we're doing. First things first, sprites. I added two sprites. The damaged sprite and the punching sprite as well. There it is. Punchy. There he is. Punchy. Punchy. Um, I also renamed the sprites. I I call this one SPR Alex Idol. This one is SPR Alex DMG, short for damage. SPR Alex Punch. So make sure you do that. Rename your sprites. Also, very important. Very important. We have to modify the mask. Why, you ask? Why? Because if we don't, we're going to get stuck. Allow me to show you. Watch this. So let's say you know, your little guy's here. He's happy. And he decides he wants to turn around. <gasps> he gets stuck in the wall. What? Why? Why is this happening? Why is it happening? I'm going to tell you why. It's because of his mask. So you see what happens is... Diagram time. Because we're using... This is going to be the uh, platform. Because we're using uh, image X scale to make him face left and make him face right. What happens is... Got your little guy here up against the wall, the platform, and this little pink box is going to represent his hit box, his collision box. So what happens is that his mask right now is closer to the left edge than it is to the right edge. For example, like, look here. See, um, the mask, it's a lot closer to this edge, to the left edge, than it is to the right edge. So what happens is when he gets flipped around using image X scale, the uh, collision mask also gets flipped. And so you know, when you're facing to the left, it's like this. And then when your little guy turns around and faces this way, the collision mask gets flipped and now it's closer to this edge than it is to the to the right edge and then what happens with this is that it overlaps the collision mask of the platform and he gets stuck can't move so what we need to do is we need to even out this mask so that it's an equal distance from the left edge as it is to the right edge all you do is come over here where you have your left top uh, bottom right numbers and change the 5 to an 8 change the 20 to a 21. So now it's an equal distance from the left and the right. And that should fix it. Let's find out. If this doesn't work, I'm going to be pretty embarrassed. Let's see. So he's facing to the right. And I'm going to hit the left. Ready? Oh! He didn't get stuck. There he is. Problem solved. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. That's it. Bye. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. So um, you need to do that to all of your all of your uh, sprites. They need to be consistent. The collision mass needs to be the same on all of them. So eight, twenty-one, just those two numbers for now. Another thing we need to add. I'm gonna duplicate this guy. We need to add our. Um, hitbox. So this box is going to appear whenever your guy throws a punch. 
it's going to appear like an, around the third frame. So it's going to appear about right there. So why am I putting it by his feet, you ask? Very good question. Very good question. Why am I putting it by his feet? Who knows the answer? Who knows the answer? Anybody? No one? All right. This is why. So, so you know, we're doing a 2.5D sort of thing here. So this collision mask represents the width of our character. Same thing with the uh, platforms, you know, how we, uh, we place the collision mask at the base. So that sort of represents the thickness of the object. So because of that, if we were to put our collision mask up here by where his fist would be, um, there would never be a collision. It wouldn't register a, a hit because the collision mask for the for the uh, hitbox would be up here, and the collision mask for our character is at his base. So therefore, we have to put the collision box down here so that so that we can register a hit if in fact there was content. And we're gonna change this name also. We're gonna start naming our sprites now. Uh, we're gonna call it SPR Hitbox. Just like so. Oh, let me just check really quick. Ah, yes. Make sure you check your collision mask. Set it to um, automatic. So it automatically just uses the, the whole box as, as the, uh, the mask. Don't forget that, guys. Very important. <coughs> Alright, enough of that. It's time to code. Time to code. Come over to your little character, your object and go to the step event under movement. I have already added it, but where it says if key left, where it says uh, horizontal speed minus equals two, just underneath that add image x scale equals negative one. And then where it says key right, add image x scale equals positive one. And after you do that, go to your draw event, and you're gonna change this because normally it says draw sprite but we're going to add ext at the end underscore ext which stands for extended draw sprite extended and we already have this stuff filled out so go over to where your z is add a comma type in image x scale add another comma image y scale comma image angle comma and i, I hit enter over here just so that you guys can see it so it doesn't go off the screen. And then uh, image blend, comma, image alpha, and close parentheses. If you don't do that, um, your little guy's not gonna, he's not gonna t face in the correct direction. So make sure you, you um, add this. Okay. We are going to start handling our input with another object. So create a new object, call it input. This is going to handle um, all our inputs from now on. Uh, later on when we start adding two players, three players, four players, this object is going to handle everybody's input. So we're just going to really quickly create the uh, object, call it input. Don't, don't do anything like uh, obj underscore input or, or any of that crazy stuff. Just simply just write input. I'll show you why later. You don't need a sprite and uh, it doesn't matter if it's visible or not. Add a begin step event and I'm looking at the timer. I'm about to hit the 10 minute mark, so what I'm going to do is, there it is, I started a new uh, a new recording, so I got an additional 10 minutes, alright, begin step, control, throw some code in there, and what we're going to do pretty much, go to your little character again, go to the step event, go to movement, I'm just going to grab all of this good stuff here. 
cut it, we're going to move it to this side, to the uh, input input step event. Just paste it there. So cut it from your object characters step event and paste it onto your input uh, begin step event. Just like that. And up here we're going to initialize some variables. Button 1 equals 0. We're going to need a button 1 because we're going to start attacking with button 1. Then we're going to set our jump to 0. We're going to set our key left to 0. And so just go down the line and do a key right, key up, key down. Just set everything to 0. 0, 0, 0, 0. Key down, zero, and later. Later on, we're gonna add some more stuff. But for now, this will do. Oh wait, forgot. Um, to define button one, so I'll type in button one equals keyboard check press. And then parentheses, board, another parentheses, um, capital X, and one of these little quote thing thingies, single quotes, and close parentheses, twice, no, three times, like that. All right. That is that. So now, let's close our input, come back to your little character, go to the step event, and we're going to replace these key left, key rights, and key ups. We're going to call this one input dot key left. What's key left, right? We got it already. Uh, yeah, key left. What? No. Let's do this. Go back. To, go back to your input. Let's just call this left. Let's just say left. Just make it easy on ourselves. I don't want to keep typing in key left, key right, key this, key that. I want to hear that noise. So also down here, just erase the part that says key underscore and just leave up, down, left, right, all the rest. Okay. Now come back over here and type in input dot left and then over here input dot right so you see this is why I told you not to write obj underscore input because you just have to type a bunch of crap uh, it's gonna take longer if you just type if you just call your object input and then you just type input dot up and then input dot down just make your life a lot easier this way okay so that's that. Next step. All right, here comes the fun part. I'm telling you right now, guys, this is gonna be a long tutorial. And by long, I mean like 20, 25 minutes. So this is how you add attacks to your game. Any attack, every attack we're gonna add, this is how we're gonna do it. This is the process. Step one, create your little attack animation. Step two, you have to define it. So we're going to say if input dot button one. So when you put a when you put something like this in parentheses, you say if input dot button one. What that means is that if uh, button one is if you're pushing it, like for example, okay, it's not showing me anything. Oh, it's down here. Duh. Going on here. Oh crap! It's gonna. I think it's gonna crash on me. I should save it. All right, there it is. So um, every frame, button one is being reset to zero or false, right? So false is the same thing as saying zero, and true is the same thing as saying one. So when we push our button, 
this turns goes from a zero to a one. So what we're saying here, if it put that button one is pushed down, or if it's true, do this. It's a little bit quicker than saying if it put that button one equals true. You know, it's kind of it's the same thing, just a little a little quicker, a little faster. So that's your tip for today. So what we're gonna do when we push button one is we're going to change our state into the punch state. Just like that. That's how simple it is. It's not, it's not difficult. It's not hard. State equals punch. So that was step two. Next step is we have to add the state. So scroll down to your, your little switch statements here where you have your idle and your jump. And add a new case. And call the case punch. Just like so. Break. And now comes the fun part. So first thing you want to do is you want to say if you want to change sprite. So you want to change your sprite from whatever you're doing to the punching sprite. So we're going to say if sprite index does not equal SPR Alex punch. If it's not, if your index is like the idle, your sprite index is, index is idle or some other thing or run or whatever, we're gonna change it to sprite uh, Alex punch. Oh, the SPR Alex punch, just like so. And the reason I like doing doing it this way where I, I write if sprite index does not equal Alex punch is because you can sort of initialize a couple of things, which means that this code, the code in here is only gonna run once because once the sprite index gets changed to punch, all of this in here is just gonna be ignored. So this is a good way to initialize stuff like uh, yeah, you're setting your sprite and also um, setting your image index to zero. You always want to set your image index to zero when you're switching from one sprite to another. For the most part you want to do that because what happens is if you're you're in your you got your, your idle sprite or your walking sprite and you're like like on frame number one or two or three and then you switch over to punching it's not gonna play the, the animation from the first uh, image. It's gonna play from the one that was in the previous image which was like for example two or three so it's gonna start right here and it's gonna skip these two which is why you always have to set your image index to zero when you switch a sprite and then image speed I'm just gonna set it to uh, 0.25 for now you guys can set that to whatever whatever you want whatever makes you happy and why am I getting this thingy here Is sign operator. Oh, <laughs> sprite index equals SPR index punch. I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you. Okay, I'm gonna comment this part right here. Set sprite, and then I'm gonna comment down here. So this next section that I'm gonna show you is where we create our hitbox. So this next part just deals with creating our hitbox. This is the part that's gonna take like a good six minutes. So here we go. Um, scripts up to right now, we have not made any scripts. And they're very useful. We're gonna use them a lot and we're gonna start right now. We're gonna call this one SCR uh, create hitbox. So we're gonna grab that. All right, I just created another recording file. This thing's gonna be like 30 minutes long, man. Anyways, so grab this, copy, paste it down here. Put your three little don't forget to put your three little um forward slashes here. Little comment. Um. Really quickly though, let me show you why we're creating the script, okay? 
here's a problem with uh, hitboxes. Um, got our little punching animation, and let's say we we just want the hitbox to appear when he gets to this frame right here. When he gets here, we want it to appear, right? Image number three. So naturally, you would say, oh, let's see if image index equals three. Create a hitbox instance. Create at our x and y coordinates. OBJ underscore hitbox and we have not created the hitbox object, which is why it's not red. So let's create the hitbox object. Create your object, call it OBJ hitbox. Uh, sprite, set it to the little red box we created. Add an event, create, control, drop the code, and say alarm zero equals one, because we want this hitbox to only be alive for one frame, and then we want it to disappear disappear out of our lives. Instance destroy. As you know, if it stays on screen for longer than that, it's going to register multiple hits. And uh, I don't think we want that, at least not yet. So here we go. So if image index equals 3, create a hitbox, right? Right? Well, diagram time, baby. Yeah. So this is what happens. I'm going to give you a quick little explanation on, on, on how the animation works in Game Maker, right? So let's see, this is our little guy right here. Frame number one, he's just kind of standing there. And then frame number two, his fist is up in the air, like this. He's about to punch. And then frame number three, four, and five, he's, he's throwing a punch. He's swinging it. So what happens with um, the way the animation works is that there's a timer, right? And that timer is called image uh, speed. And we set ours to decimal 25. So, what happens is that Game Maker starts counting from zero. And then the next frame it adds decimal 25. So the next frame would be decimal 25. And then the next frame after that decimal 50, and then the next frame after that, decimal 75. All the while, it's displaying image number 0, this one. So while it's counting, 0 0.25, 0 0.50, 0 0.75, it's still just showing this image to the viewer. But when we finally get to 1 decimal 0, 0, it starts showing the next frame, frame 1, because uh, this was our image 0, this is image 1, this is image 2. So, whatever number is here to the left of the decimal, that's the um, frame that's displayed. And that's how you get your little animation. So then you got 1.25, 1.50, 1.75, and then you get to 2.0. And it shows frame number 2. And in our case, frame number 3, it's also punching, I guess. So we're saying once you get to uh, three, create a hitbox. So if we use decimal 25, it'll work fine. It'll create the hitbox, it'll only create one hitbox, and then that'll be that. However, let's say, I don't know, you wanna kinda have a stat that you can power up and then, and then uh, yeah, he punches faster, or maybe he's, maybe he's tired, he punches slower. So you want to change this number up, right? Let's say you want to do, okay. You go, I think I think I like 28, or I think I like decimal 30. Um, well, guess what's going to happen? This is not going to work anymore. Why? Because we're never going to land exactly on 3 when we count by decimal 30. Because we're going to go decimal 30, 60, 90, 1.2, 1.5, 1.8, 2.1, 2.4, 2.5, 2.6, 2.7, 2.8, 2.9, 2.10, 2.11, 2.12, 2.13, 2.14, 2.15, 2.16, 2.17, 2.18, 2.19, 2.20, 2.21, 2.22, 2.23, 2.24, 2.25, 2.26, 2.27, 2.28, 2.29, 2.30, 2.31, 2.32, 2.33, 2.34, 2.35, 2.36, 2.37, 2.38, 2.39, 2.40, 2.41, 2.42, 2.43, 2.44, 2.45, 2.46, 2.47, 2.48, 2.49, 2.50, 2.51, 2.52, 2.53, 2.54, 2.55, 2.56, 2.57, 2.58, 2.59, 2.60, 2.61, 2.62, 2.63, 2.64, 2.65, 2.66, 2.67, 2.68, 2.69, 2.70, 2.71, 2.72, 2.73, 2.74, 2.75, 2.76, 2.77, 2.78, 2.79, 2.80, 2.81, 2.82, 2.83, 2.84, 2.85, 2.86, 2.87, 2.88, 2.89, 2.90, 2.91, 2.92, 2.93, 2.94, 2.95, 2.96, 2.97, 2.98, 2.99, 2.100, 2.101, 2.102, 2.103, 2.104, 2.105, 2.106, 2.107, 2.108, 2.109, 2.110, 2.111, 2.112, 2.113, 2.114, 2.115, 2.116, 2.117, 2.118, 2.119, 2.120, 2.121, 2.122, 2.123, 2.124, 2.125, 2.126, 2.127, 2.128, 2.129, 2.130, 2.131, 2.132, 2.133, 2.134, 2.135, 2.136, 2.137, 2.138, 2.139, 2.140, 2.151, 2.152, 2.153, 2.154, 2.155, 2.156, 2.157, 2.158, 2.159, 2.160, 2.170, 2.171, 2.172, 2.173, 2.174, 2.175, 2.176, 2.177, 2.178, 2.179, 2.180, 2.191, 2.192, 2.193, 2.194, 2.195, 2.196, 2.197, 2.198, 2.199, 2.200, 2.201, 2.202, 2.203, 2.204, 2.205, 2.206, 2.207, 2.208, 2.209, 2.210, 2.211, 2.212, 2.213, 2.214, 2.215, 2.216, 2.217, 2.218, 2.219, 2.220, 2.221, 2.222, 2.223, 2.224, 2.225, 2.226, 2.227, 2.228, 2.29, 2.30, 2.31, 2.32, 2.33, 2.34, 2.35, 2.36, 2.37, 2.38, 2.39, 2.40, 2.41, 2.42, 2.43, 2.44, 2.45, 2.46, 2.47, 2.48, 2.49, 2.50, 2.51, 2.52, 2.53, 2.54, 2.55, 2.56, 2.57, 2.58, 2.59, 2.00, 2.01, 2.02, 2.03, 2.04, 2.05, 2.06, 2.07, 2.08, 2.09, 2.10, 2.11, 2.12, 2.13, 2.14, 2.15, 2.16, 2.17, 2.18, 2.19, 2.20, 2.21, 2.22, 2.23, 2.24, 2.25, 2.26, 2.27, 
point zero zero it's going to be three decimal some other number and what's going to happen when you use this code is that if it just so happens that your image index I mean your image speed is something like this you're never going to land on three and you're never going to create your hitbox so this would this wouldn't register a, a, a hit it was just it's going to be the animation no hitboxes so one solution that I've seen and we're not going to use it here I'm just going to show you an example if image index is greater than three and image uh, index is less than four so this this approach you kind of try to capture you try to catch the the frame so if our image index is greater than three but less than four create a hitbox and it works it'll create a hitbox but it's going to create like three or four hitboxes depending on what this number is here the image speed and we don't want that we just want one hitbox not three not four not five just one why does it create so many hitboxes allow me to show you so we're saying if our image index is greater than three but less than four create a little hitbox right there like that so what happens is let's just uh, use our example here to say 0.25 right so we land on three no hitbox is created because it has to be greater then the next frame is 3.25 we create a hitbox then the next frame after that 3.50 we're still less than 4 so guess what happens we create another hitbox then the next frame 3.75 we're still below 4 and greater than 3 so guess what happens another freaking hitbox and we don't want all these hitboxes we don't want 3 we want 1 so what do we do? We create a script, people, and that's what we do. That's what this script's gonna handle. We're gonna erase this, because I don't wanna use that. And we're gonna create our script. This little handy script is going to create only one hitbox precisely on the frame that we want. So there's this guy on YouTube, and his name is Sean is Balding, and he, uh, put up a video about useful scripts that he uses a lot and I kind of want to add this to the list because this is a pretty useful script here um, what this script's gonna do it's gonna it's gonna do some math that's what it's gonna do it's gonna do math it's going to calculate stuff it's gonna calculate um, well I don't really want to get into the details because I'm already way over time. So just trust me, this works. So it's gonna do one divided by image speed times uh, IMG number, image number. So IMG num is a variable that we're going to uh, declare up here. And what this is gonna do is zero. This is the frame that we want our hitbox to appear in, right? So, I don't know, through in our case three. So one divided by image speed times three, because we want it to appear in the third frame. Um, times image speed again, like this. Uh huh. So let's come up here, declare our variables. Uh, IMG num comma IMG semicolon and the IMG num is going to represent uh, what what uh, uh, image number uh, you want the hitbox to appear on in our case sorry for the interruption I had to start another video damn this is a long ass video if you guys are still watching if you're still watching, you guys are nuts, man. Nuts. Alright, I'm just going to speed through this already. Okay, so now on the next part, just type in uh, if image. Uh, uh, 
index. Jesus Christ, Ms. that's not. Image index is equal to IMG. Do the following with instance create x y obj hitbox well let me see actually no we'll save this for another video just leave it like that okay the next thing you want to do is to come back to your little character object go back to the movement script go all the way to where we're creating the hitbox and we're just gonna say Let's erase that and simply call the script. That's all you do. Just call it and you tell it what frame you want your hitbox to appear. So that's what I did here. I want it to appear on frame 3. Now, this IMG num is going to be 3. Right? We're going to pass a 3 into it. So this will be replaced by a three. Um, cool little trick, watch this. When you guys create a script, go back to your little script over here. Uh, type in your three forward slashes, SCR create hitbox, and then put a little parentheses and say um, image num, like what, what frame do you want the hitbox to appear in? So when you do, when you add this little parentheses and IMG num, come back over here. Check this out down here and see how it, it tells you um, the argument that it takes. It's pretty cool. So, tip number two for you guys. So, what's cool about this script is that now you can change your image speed to whatever you want, whenever you want. And the hitbox will always appear on the exact frame that you tell it. Always. It'll calculate whether it's doesn't matter what the image speed is 0 0.25, 0 0.30, 0 0.30, 3 point one four five six whatever it's always gonna work all the time and that's why I like the script it's pretty cool um, we're gonna add some more stuff but I'm gonna leave that for another video because we're already way over time finally what we do is animation and right so what happens when the uh, animation finishes I'm gonna say if image index is greater than image number minus one. So this is another way of saying at the end of the animation, this is what I want to happen. Change our state back to idle. That's it. Oh, and before you run this, go to your rooms and go to here where it says create a uh, creation code. It's under the settings tab and type in instance create and it doesn't matter where you put it uh, input because if you don't create the input you're gonna you're gonna crash all right so let's run it so um, there's something that we still need to fix yeah. all right right okay so so um, go down to where it says idle and then if jump just put Type in uh, input in front of it. Input dot jump. There. So you got your guy. Now he's gonna throw the punch, but see he kind of he stays stuck in that animation. So what you gotta do is come back over here and find your case that says idle, and you wanna set your sprite index to Alex underscore idle. Then forgot the SPR. SPR idle, and then you also want to set your image speed to zero, and then let's run it, and it should work now. And sorry for the uh, length of the video, guys. So there it is. Check it out. Boosh! Throwing his punch. Just punch. But the uh, hitbox didn't appear because I didn't put, I didn't describe it here. Okay, so go back to your script, uh, create hitbox, and just say if uh, if img, I mean image index is equal to img. Uh, 
with instance create xy obj hitbox so what we want to do here is set our image x scale to be equal to Want it to face the same direction that uh, that uh, our character is facing. There, hit okay, run. All right, so look. And I'm already tired. All right, so there it is. See. All right, back to your script. One mistake I made. Um, make sure you write the word round. Round the uh, image img num by the image speed, and then um, and then multiply by image speed and erase this part over here there uh, that should do it so I changed the image speed here to 0 0.28 just to show you that it works so and then if I change this to I don't know 3.2 or something oh sorry meant 0.32 then that'll also work. Okay. There you go. Let's just leave it at point twenty-five. Anyways, uh, I didn't get a chance to get to the part where it damaged the other dude, but I'm gonna leave that for another video because this thing's already gotten ridic ridiculously long. Um, so I just want to thank really quickly uh, uh, a guy called uh, Giggle. I, well, I don't know how to pronounce his, his name. I'm just gonna call him Gigglesin. But he he mentioned or he brought to my attention how uh, uh, the files on Patreon on my Patreon account they were. Uh, missing some information they were missing uh, sprites and other stuff so I'm gonna re-upload all that stuff and this this um, this project file will, will also be up there as well as the sprites and then um, I'm gonna include two two um, project files so I'm gonna include this one the finished state this one and then I'm gonna include the one um, let's see how do I say this uh, sort of like the beginning one, the 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 ball gets from last from last video, all right. So till then, guys.